Let's look at another question. So the question here is about the Doppler effect. Guys, I just want to tell you a little bit of uh, like some advice. Questions like the Doppler effect and like organic chemistry, naming and drawing compounds, those are questions you need to get 100% for. If you can score marks there, you know that it's marks in the bag because number one, they usually ask them exactly the same way. They never change. It's either the ambulance is coming towards you or it's moving away. It's only one formula when we work with the Doppler effect. You just need to know how to read your scenario correctly. So for this question, I can see it's only for nine marks, but it's a question that you guys cannot get wrong. So you must make sure that you bank on it. So let's see, we have an ambulance and it approaches. Approaches means it's moving towards. We have a stationary observer. It means a person. Now, observer is just another fancy word to say person or participant and so forth to a stationary observer. Now, we know that if he's stationary, the initial velocity of the person is zero meters per second. We've already looked at the word stationary in the previous question. And this, this ambulance is moving at a constant speed of 10.6 meters per second. Now we know from physics, if speed and velocity is constant, then there is no acceleration. Now I want to just go through this. If you're doing the Doppler effect, it's all about, is it coming towards you or is it coming away from you? For an example, if I'm walking towards Bali and like, Bali, Bali, it sounds pretty loud, the same as an ambulance. If you were to close your eyes and just listen to whether the ambulance is moving away or going away or moving away from you, the louder the sound comes, you'll hear, Woo, it's coming towards me. But if it goes, Woo, moving further and further and further away because it sounds softer and softer, then you know that it's moving away from you. But something to remember when you're doing the Doppler effect is that if it's moving towards you, the wavelengths get so small, that's why it sounds like it's ringing in your ears and you can hear it from a mile away. But if it's moving away from you, the wavelengths get very long. That's why it sounds very faint and faint and faint. And it moves further and further away, meaning the wavelengths get longer and longer. So that's something you need to keep in mind. So now it's moving at that speed of 10.6 meters per second, while its sirens produce a sound at constant frequency of 943.3 hertz. Now, the stationary observer measures the frequency of the sound as eight, as 985 hertz. So now, this is what the ambulance is producing. Remember, the ambulance acts as a source, so that is F of S. And then the listener is then F of L. That is what they are hearing. Now, name the medical instrument that makes use of the Doppler effect. Now, before I answer this question, one other thing that you guys must remember with the Doppler effect or the question that they love asking you, they're going to ask you, uh, where do we use this in real life? Because, I mean, you must obviously know, everything in physics that we do learn is actually some things or things that we use in our everyday lives, especially like Newton's laws, the seat belts that we have, the airbags that pop out of your car, it's all based on physics. So things like the Doppler effect. Have you ever wondered how they actually measure the heart rate of a fetus when a woman is pregnant? All those sound waves that the baby's making that actually uses the Doppler effect because it's sound waves. The doctors are able to use this to actually tell the heartbeat of the fetus and all other things. I'm not in the medical field, but that is then one of some of the things that they actually use it in. And going further, I know that things like traffic officers and stuff like that, they can actually use things like the Doppler effect. So you need to know, I would say a maximum of four in case they say name four things that the Doppler effect is used for, then you know how it's used. Use your textbooks, make sure that you do know them and you always just like put them every now and then there, every time you answer a Doppler effect question. For the, but for this one, the medical instrument that makes use of the Doppler effect, I'm going to answer this one. This one, it will be 6.1. The, me, the medical instrument is the Doppler flow meter. The Doppler flow meter. Okay, so let's see. Now they're telling us to calculate the velocity of the sound. They want us to calculate the velocity of the sound. Now, what does this mean? Now, remember, the ambulance is moving at a certain velocity and it's moving towards the observer. The observer is standing still. However, it, there is sound on how the sound waves actually travel in the air. 
Now, I want to take you guys a little bit back on where this actually comes from. If me and Violet decide to go swimming in December and we're underwater and I scream, Violet, Violet, that's what you're technically going to hear because the medium of water and the air is completely different. The viscosity of the water and the air is completely different, right? Obviously, water is much more thicker than air, which means the particles in the water are not going to travel at the same speed as they will in the air. But if we are talking um, in person and I say, Bali, she can actually hear me clear. She can hear the sound because the particles of sound are moving more freely. So this is what, mean, this, is what this means. If you're talking about sound, sound travels differently in different mediums. If you are in the air, if you are underwater, if it is a hot day, if it is a cold day, it will all differ on the speed of sound because sound travels in different mediums, mediums being air, water, and so forth. So we need to calculate the speed of sound in the air. So this is how we're gonna do that. Obviously, we must always start with a formula first. We are doing 6.2. The formula for the Doppler effect is F of L is equal to, uh, let me not skip a step, it's V plus minus, it's the velocity of the listener over V plus minus the velocity of the source multiplied by F of S, which is the frequency of the source. They told us that the observer registered a frequency of 985. We are looking for V. This V here means the speed of sound in a certain medium. Now, another thing we must remember, how I always tell my kids, they always say plus or minus because it depends whether it's moving towards you or it's moving away from you. If it's moving towards you, it gets much more louder. So it means that our denominator in the formula needs to be pretty small. Now this means here at the bottom here, meaning if I want to get a very small denominator, I need to subtract. The smaller the denominator means the higher my numerator. So my denominator can divide many times in my numerator. However, if the sound source is moving away from me, it means it's going to sound, it's going to, this, the frequency is going to be pretty small, wavelengths are going to be pretty long, and so forth. So it means I need to get a big velocity for the bottom part. So it means here I'm going to use a plus so that it doesn't divide so many times here at the bottom. So in this case, I'm going to use a plus here, but the velocity of the listener is zero. Why is it zero? They said he is stationary or they are stationary. Stationary means VI is zero. I'm looking for V and this is a minus. Remember, it's coming towards, I need to get a small number here. They told me that the ambulance is moving with a velocity of 10.6 meters per second. However, it is emitting a frequency of 954.3. Now this is all mathematics. I'm gonna do it the long way around. I'm going to have 985 on this side. V plus zero, I'm just gonna get V. At the bottom, I'm gonna have V minus 10.6. And this is all gonna be multiplied by 954.3. Now remember, I've got a fraction on this side, I've got a numerator and a denominator, and technically here it's a whole number. I know it has a decimal, but I've only got a number. How does this work? I'm gonna put this over a one. Remember, how do we multiply fractions? It's numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. On this side, I'm still going to have 985. If I have V multiplied by 954.3, I'm going to get 954.3V. You don't have to put a multiplication or an addition there. You just leave it exactly like that. At the bottom, if I've got V minus 10.6 times 1, I'm going to get V minus 10.6 because anything multiplied by one remains itself. More mathematics. What do I do now? I've got a fraction on this side again and I've got a whole number. I'm going to put this over a one and then I need to cross multiply. So I'm going to take this multiplied by one. I'm going to have 954.3. Don't forget your V is equal to. I'm going to cross multiply this part. 985, I'm going to do it the long way around so that everyone knows how I got it. Now, this 985 needs to divide or needs to multiply the V minus the 10.6. I've got V minus 10.6. So this is expanding it's mathematical rules. I'm going to still have 954.3 on this side V. I'm going to multiply in. 
985 times V is going to give me 985 and then V minus 985 times 10.6 that I need a calculator for. 985 times 10.6. Yes, I put that right. So I'm going to get 10441. I'm going to get 10441. Now, mathematics. I need to put all the things or all the like terms in one side. Now, I want to show you how I'm going to do it with this blue pen. If I move this one on that side, the sign is going to change. It's, going to, it's a positive. If I take it on this side, it's going to be a, a negative. However, I can't say 954.3 minus. I don't want to get a negative answer. You can. It doesn't matter. However, I'm going to take this one this side rather because it's a negative on this side. If it comes to this side, it becomes a positive. I'm going to take this one. If I take it on this side, it's going to become a negative. If I subtract this number here and I take away that, I'm going to have a positive answer. So I'm just going to rewrite it. So on this side, I'm going to have 10, 4, 4, 1. It doesn't really matter how you would have done it as long as you use the same or the correct procedure, and that is V. This jumps the equation sign. It becomes a negative. I'm going to have 9, 54.3 V. I'm going to do this in the calculator. Now I've got 985 minus 954.3. See what we get here. I've got 30.7. So I've got 10441 is equal to 30.7. Don't forget your V. We're almost done. However, I want the velocity in the air. I must divide, but everything that is the, which is actually bothering the V. I'm going to divide both sides by 30.7. 30.7 divided by 30.7 gives me 1. I'm left with V. Need my calculator again. If I say 10441 divided by 30.7, that gives me... 340 point, I'm going to make a 10 because the third number is a 7, it's 5 or greater. It will change the 9 to the next number, making it a 10 or a 0 if I carry it over. So I'm just going to write this as 10. So 340.10, always to two decimal places. Remember, velocity, the SI unit, is meters per second to the exponent 1. So with 6.3, it says, how would the wavelength, remember wavelength is represented by a symbol called lambda, how would the wavelength of the sound wave produced by the siren, so the siren is what's coming from the ambulance, change if the frequency of the wave was higher than the 954.3 hertz? We must write down whether it will only increase, decrease, or stay the same. So I just want to first write the answer, and then I'm going to explain to you guys. So with 6.3, we know that it will then decrease. Uh, let me just spell it right before Janet kills me. Decrease. It will decrease. And the follow-up question says we must give a reason for your answer. Now, guys, how I always say, if they ever give you a question like this where you must say increase, decrease, and so forth, and there is a formula that actually helps us to, to answering questions. I know they love such questions in electricity where they ask you, if resistor Y was removed, what will happen to the potential difference? It means you need to go back to your formula or the equation that you are using and then try to see what is directly proportional and what is inversely proportional. Remember, those terminologies mean if one gets big, the other one also gets big. If the one gets small, the other one gets big, right? They are not directly proportional. If you ever had to draw a graph, it'll be a straight line positive graph according to mathematics, and that means directly proportional. They relate to one another. So in this case, we are talking about wavelength. The formula for wavelength is what we learn in grade 10. So this is 6.4. I'm first going to write the formula. We know that V is equal to F lambda. I'm going to take it step by step. This is the velocity. F is your frequency. And we know that this is then your wavelength. This is your wavelength. Now, I want to make wavelength the subject of the formula by dividing both sides by F. I'm going to have lambda is equal to V over F. However, the question initially told us that it is moving at a constant speed, right? So we're not really going to take V into consideration, but a constant speed means I can say that lambda is equal to 1 over F. 
they, are, they have told me what will happen if the frequency was higher than that, was higher than the 985.4 hertz, if I'm not mistaken, if this was higher. Let's go back to physicals, physics rule. If we start off, let me start off with this one. Lambda is directly proportional to velocity, which means if my lambda gets big, my velocity, or if my lambda increases rather, my velocity will also increase. However, lambda is inversely proportional to frequency, which means if my lambda increases, my frequency will decrease. Or if my lambda decreases, my frequency will increase. That's what directly, they sometimes use symbols like this directly and inversely proportional mean. Now the question is telling me if this one increases, if the wavelength emitted by the frequency is higher than this one. So let's say hypothetically speaking, we're sitting at a thousand hertz, it's higher than that. What will happen to the wavelength? Wavelength is inversely proportional to frequency, which means if the frequency goes up, lambda must go down. That is then why we got that lambda will decrease. So you could have said that lambda is inversely proportional to your frequency, or you could have said A for constant speed of lambda. Constant speed. You could have even used any one of these formulas. You could have used the velocity and just say uh, velocity is constant. Velocity is constant. Remember, constant velocity means no acceleration or no change in acceleration. So that is then what it means, that lambda is inversely proportional to frequency. When one goes up, the other one goes down and vice versa. I think that is the last question we had to have for velocity. And this was then for nine marks.